Hey, CJ here, and welcome to Push to Plat. Thank you for joining us. I just wanted to take a moment of your time just to explain the introduction of today's show. In the introduction, we reference that we'll be dropping in the second part of the interview with the wonderful Vermont and Dizza City about all things guides. Unfortunately, myself and Unknown have run rather long today, what a surprise, talking all things games. So we're going to hold on to the second part of that episode and we'll drop it in in the next few weeks. So today, you're stuck with us. Buckle in and enjoy. It's time for Push to Play, your weekly trophy podcast and all things PlayStation with CJ and Unknown. Welcome to Push to Plat, episode number six. Thank you for joining us and welcome. Whether you be a returning listener or a first time voyager, I'm glad that you've chosen to spend a little bit of your day with us today, whatever you're doing. So I'd like to introduce my co host today, Mr. Unknown. How are you today, sir? Hello, everybody. I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Yeah, look, I'm I'm actually pretty good this week. The week I've been a little bit a little bit under the weather, but I'm feeling I'm feeling alive, I'm feeling awake, and I'm feeling like I'm ready to talk some games and have a have a little bit of fun today. So uh, just a little uh, recap on what we're doing today. Last week, if you listened, was the the first part of our two part series, I suppose you could say. We had the wonderful The Mind is a City last week, and we were we uh, intended to talk all things guides, but we got a little bit sidetracked in in sort of, you know, games we've played, sort of reminiscing about older systems and games and all things of that nature, I suppose. So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover our normal sort of routine, then we'll drop in the actual topic of all things guides with the wonderful The Mind is a City. If you've ever been interested in writing guides, if you read guides like all of us, uh, or if you have any sort of general interest in what goes on behind the scenes with all that, I would definitely recommend listening. And, you know, I'll probably mention this again later in the episode, but hopefully it sort of inspires you to maybe have a go at writing guides. I know I've written a couple and I'm definitely not fantastic at it. I know, Mr. Unknown, you've written a few guides as well. That's correct? Yeah, I've written some. Duck Dynasty. Yeah, that's that's the, the fantastic Duck Dynasty. <laughs> you've, you've written quite a, quite a few as well, I think, uh, VNs and other things too. So, you know... Uh, yeah, most of them. Yeah, perfect. So hopefully, you know, if you feel like having a go, there are multiple different sites you can put it on or, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. But it's sort of a fun thing, you know, to know that get the game so well, to be able to write a guide and then maybe, you know, help out other people or, you know, even help out yourself if you intend to do stacks of it down the track, perhaps. So I'm going to throw over to you, Mr. Unknown. I think you're going to have, you have something for us to start off with. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. So we, uh, the question, of the, well, we usually have a question of the week. So this dispute by Mr. Uh, what's his name? Something like Mr. Blue 0307. And uh, he was saying he unlocked some trophies in a, in a weird order. Now, this, the same thing happened to, uh, to a certain... Um... Oh, well, no, we we're going to talk about the if you want to colonize the moon or the... Uh... Not colonize, own the moon or the sun. Oh, excellent. Because uh, the moon, eventually it could be colonized, see? You could make a lot of money if you own the moon. That's that is very true. So, so I think this stems from the fact that we had a little discussion earlier in the week about what what could happen if you or would you buy the moon if you could buy the moon. So it's it's changed now to, to colonize, has it? That's that's what I was thinking. I think the sun. I mean, yes, you could charge people apparently. I guess for solar power or something like that. But that's true. But maybe in the future we'll be able to live on the sun, or you could visit it, like in a little sun. Are you going to live on the sun, CJ? <laughs> it's well, you would. <laughs> I don't know. They, they... You couldn't even create material that could possibly <laughs> hold up. Oh, to that you're, you're being limited by by living in the present. In the future, there'll be a way. I mean, you're not going to just walk around out there in shorts and a t-shirt. Probably, you know, you'll have some sunscreen and and maybe some sort of cool little uh, sunship that you're in. But you know, it's it's made it's. Who would have thought we would ever be on the moon? You know, people would walk on the moon. So it, I don't think sunscreen would would really matter at that point. <laughs> you don't think so? 
I don't know. I, think I don't exciting. think so. Don't don't waste your three fifty on a bottle of sunscreen. Yeah. If you're <laughs> well, that would be the cheapest part, walk on the sun. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So obviously, you 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 want to live on the moon. You you would colonize the moon. I don't want to live on the moon. I'm just thinking. What about no gravity? You though? have you have the best chance oh. of profiting off of. Oh, it's a, it's a profit. Uh, yes, I see. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they're already profiting, aren't they? People are, are, are lining up to fly to the moon. Uh, so you know, I, I, why not cash in on that? I think it'd be pretty cool if you had the option to visit the moon. Would you Would you do it? I don't know. Probably not. With withstand the like time it would take to get in there in space uh, i think i feel like really it would be pretty yeah. i mean i don't know if they had a gigantic spaceship but i'm thinking you'd go up in mm. pretty small a lot of money it would be a lot of money what if they let you you know take your vita with you and you could be the first first gamer to platinum a game on the moon what a claim that would be you would be the number one moon gamer in the world well in the universe i mean that's even better than the world who knows there might be people <laughs> playing playing soldier boy vitas on uh, some moon and i hope so yeah yeah well i mean i mean they'd have to be more advanced if they if they're playing on the moon so they'd be on the xbox for sure yeah, but, they got know. their soldier boy, boy vitas of course they're more advanced yeah of course of course so you know I, I suppose there could be an issue though with syncing your your time stamps from the moon so does that sort of open up i'm, I'm not sure where this next next part of your question is going is there a next part or timestamps on the moon? Hmm. That's that's what. Oh, I see. So is that a valid? Is that a valid? Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing you a link because I'm not sure where we're going. Like a valid excuse? <laughs> like that's a you can't be flagged because you planted it on the moon. Your timestamps are messed up because you planted on the moon. I I would I would love to see someone use that argument. I'll use that argument if it ever happens to me. <laughs> I'm gonna try to flag you just so I can oh, see this argument. Right. That's right. It's why I only finish 5% of my games. I've actually finished them all. It's just the delay and the, the trophy stamps coming back from the moon. Ah, okay. <laughs> that, that could be what it is, yeah. Yeah, no, I like it. That's good. That's good. So w was there another part to that? I, I, you started off in another direction. No, that's it. Uh, uh, that's, oh, okay. I think that's it. Let's talk about games we played this week. Yeah, perfect. Good. Okay, sorry, listeners. I'm catching up slowly. I, I think I see what happened there. So <laughs> I don't know if you do. So what did you play this week? Unknown. What's, what's been happening? I finished Word Search. Or did I finish that last week? I think I finished it this week. But it's done. Congratulations. <laughs> now it's just like, I kind of just want to play P-Cross. Like, it's going to take longer than Word Search, but it's just like, oh my God, Word Search is done. If I have like three hours in the morning on Sunday or something. Can I just ask, I see your time there, Platinum, in two months, uh, three hours. Does that put you in the top 50 uh, on the leaderboard for Word Search? <laughs> I, I have my doubts. I could check. I could check. Let's see. Uh, Wow, 500. That's impressive. And 45. <laughs> oh, wow. This is like less than 50%. Now, this one person says recent, recent forum posts. Finally, I'm so excited. I wonder if I click this, did they say I finished? Yeah. Did you write that post? <laughs> it wouldn't no. surprise me. How long, how long, like, do you think that game actually is with a guide if you're just doing the, the puzzles? I don't, I don't even know. Mm, is I it sort of five to six hours or is it much, much longer? I, they were probably taking me about a minute and a half to two minutes. Mm. So maybe not so like 650 minutes, 600 minutes, something like that. So just a little bit hours. Yeah. Okay. It's quite long. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. longer than it's worth. <laughs> so, so, so you will not be stacking that game anytime soon, obviously. <laughs> if I run out of things to play and I'm on, my, on a plane with a Vita. No, because see, this is what's going to happen is mm. if start that game on a plane or something sure i'll mm -hmm. get like an hour in and finish like five puzzles and then i'm gonna have this issue where it's on my backlog for for two months two months and three hours yes <laughs> just no it's just not not even gonna bother let me just play just play p cross or something that's actually yeah well i mean you could always try and beat that time i suppose so you know there's there's a bit of leeway there you could <laughs> that, that is great yeah. I'm not used to seeing that sort of length on your profile. That's something that that's sort of, you know, approaching my sort of standard two months, three hours. But hmm. what are you talking about? If, they, if you don't finish a game, it doesn't give you a platinum in time. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know oh, no, I'm just talking about time in a, oh, I see. You're taking a ticket there. Well, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get to that later. I may, I'm, I'm thinking about letting go of the platinum ship completely, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Only playing 100%? No, 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 no. Just not platinuming it. Not to name names, but there is a person. I know. No platinum. I think that's quite impressive. Only, except they, they started one. Yeah, yeah. So they can't finish it now? Is that... Yes, that's that's probably what what will happen. You just can't finish it. They they're, they're not allowed to plan in twenty nineteen. That would be good. Yeah, 
<laughs> and then, 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 then probably. all right what else what else have we got finish oh i played your toy which is uh yes what is this found by this teddy bear that is like ripped in half and somehow the stuffing is all spiky i don't know Ugh. weird so it's a horror the trophies i had to like do several times because they just didn't work for me mm-hmm. you had to throw this ball into this basket or something and uh i did it like four times and it didn't work so do that whole room over five times I, like i memorized that room i memorized all the codes and stuff weird yeah it wasn't that long of a game play some also shape-shifting detective <laughs> what did you think of this <laughs> it had some humorous moments maybe i shouldn't say it because it might be spoilers yeah maybe i'll just leave it out well i don't know do you think people are a lot of people are going to play the shape-shifting detective I, well i mean it's been out for a while hasn't it i mean so okay so don't listen to it. it's like 10 seconds if you don't want like one of the weirdest surprises in the mm-hmm. game and they just like drop it off unless i just wasn't paying attention at the end but there's, there's this one character and she she just starts talking about being abducted by aliens like just out of the blue and she's kind of like a little weird like to begin with but then there's this whole conversation about being abducted by aliens and then it just like there's like nothing at the end of the game relate i don't think Unless I missed a scene or something, but I don't know. It's just weird. Also, too, the game, it's just all, all you do is, like, talk to people. Like, it just has like, options of who to go to talk to. And then you can shift into another character and go talk to them as other characters sometimes. Because a lot of the time, it's just a blank chair or couch, and they're not there, and you can't talk to them. So, graying out the option or whatever, they make you go to the room and see that they're not there, and then wait... 30 seconds to go back to the hallway or whatever. Some issues with a couple of the trophies, but uh, got it in the end. Is that a two playthrough game? Or I think he could probably do it in one if you did everything oh. correctly. See, there's this one trophy that um, you're supposed to not like have yourself found out as a shapeshifter, but I did the actions and I accidentally made a backup save too late. So I was like at the choice, and I was like, oh shoot, I can't do this now because then I'm just gonna mess. He already knows I'm a shapeshifter, and I couldn't go back further. Like, I thought it would start the scene over or something, but it didn't. And uh, I still got the trophy at the end for like doing it perfectly without being seen and stuff. So, unless there's a burden for error, or it's like all you gotta do is guess the right thing at the end, or I don't know, but I was lucky I got that. But other places, they go much faster because you can just skip everything. I think that trophy might be a little forgiving because I played it before there was a guide or anything. I didn't look at the list and I got that trophy as well. And I'm sure I had a few few close shaves with that. So it, it might be a little more forgiving, you know, than, than we think. That yeah, one. you don't have to do it perfect. For, yeah. It seems like description wise and stuff, you'd want to do it perfect. Because I think the guy at the end even says, oh, you were, like did such a good job mm. or something. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. It has some wonderful voice acting, though. Uh, the girl on the couch who owns the, or was running the hotel, is her name Violet? I forget. Yeah, Violet. Think, yeah, just fantastically over the top British campy uh, voice acting and acting in general <laughs> from her um, and a couple of the other the ladies in it as well. So <laughs> it's crazy. What was with those scenes? Like when you had choices of dialogues, like choices yes. options and you were waiting to pick. What was with that? <laughs> they would have these like weird camera angles with the character like doing these weird motions. I don't know if yes. you know this, but there was the the, the chief and his hat. Mm-hmm. Oh man, yes. love hats! I don't know if you watched all of that. Um, I did. But I did. I... Like he puts the hat on, he smiles so big. Oh man. The, I don't. Um. The, the funny thing with that is I had a bit more time this week at home, so I don't normally uh, tune into Twitch that often and watch streams. But I did. I did tune in this week briefly and watch a little bit of unknown stream. And he was playing the shape shifting detective. And this hat. I think this is the bit you're talking about with the hat. And I think I, I heard you you say on the the stream or something. This guy really likes that the hat or something. And he just put the hat on his head, and then he did this really creepy cheesy smile straight yeah. after it. And I just thought it was the perfect time to tune in. <laughs> I mean, it was it was great. But yeah, no, look, I think it's okay. I mean, you know, if you're not going for the, or I think even if you're going for the plat, it's still quite short. But if you're just playing it through once, it, it's probably only like three or four hours. I think maximum. It, it's quite. I short. think playing it through like just playing it through like uh it's pretty hard like you're gonna be able to get through it it's not like you need to look up what you need to do it's just who did you have to talk to to get to go to the next chapter or whatever that's right yeah Yeah. i think playing it through the first time i it only took me like two hours and then it took me like an additional two to clean up but yeah it could have been way 
it's just I was having issues with four trophies. So yeah, and look, I mean, if if you like, I mean, it's an FMV. If you like games like the Bunker and the Late, late Shift, it's more in that line. We we talked last week briefly about oh it. the Bunker. Ew. <laughs> well, they're similar. That one was not good. similar in style. We talked last week briefly about the Doctor Decker. That that's slightly different. That that's a lot more involved. That game with you know having to use a keyboard and type in responses. So this is much more in the vein of, of Late Shift and, and the Bunker. So you know if if you haven't if you haven't jumped on it, I imagine it's not that that pricey uh, anymore. It's been out for at, at least six months maybe more yeah it, it's it's you know like fun and entertainment i think but what else have you been playing unknown uh the messenger actual good game yes yeah it was, i'm having fun with that one i got one more section and then the final boss and then i gotta go back and get like four trophies in a playthrough mm. yeah so like you said tonight you just explain what type of game game it is it's like a metroidvania 2d platformer I don't think it's like the best one I've ever played, but it's it's pretty good. Yeah, it, it has got some very good reviews. So. It has this weird jump mechanic that I think works actually pretty well. You can't double jump, but if you jump and then hit something, you can jump again. It's called cloud stepping, and it works. Like, I'm surprised how well it works. I would just think it'd just be a mess to have something like that, but um, like the timing and stuff is pretty good on it, so... Um, like you can pretty much jump square x square x square and it'll like work perfect sometimes you climb things and you just start mashing x square x squared and it, you'll get there sometimes but like, like you mess up a little bit oh let me just hold up in x square like crazy does it work on like a, a checkpoint system or, or what happens if you die like yeah there's it's i don't think it's that hard reason being you have kind of a lot of health like definitely like it's kind of forgiving in that regard and there's a decent amount of checkpoints like, I'd probably say it's only, like, a 3 out of 10 difficulty. I mean, I'm okay. Like, I'm probably okay to good at platformers, so it might be harder for somebody else. But I don't think it's... I think it's pretty doable for, for most people. I'm probably not that long either. Probably, like, 12 or so hours, 15 hours the first time you go through it. Fair enough, yeah. I know at the time of recording this, there is no guide available. Having said that, there'll probably be a guide put up this afternoon. But... Oh, there is a guide. Oh, there is a guide, there is there. A guide. Yeah, good. So, okay, so you can uh, it's check a switch. it out. It's a switch guide. Oh, okay, perfect. So are there missable? You, like, you don't really need a guide for the trophies. No, okay. Most of, well, there's like three dialogues that are missable, which I got to look up somewhere. Everything else is just story-related, get collectibles, and... I think there's a new game plus in that as well, isn't there? I think you can. I or, think so. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah, maybe check that out if you if you miss any any trophies. Um, yeah, but that game has been very highly recommended off the Switch. Uh, so you know, definitely check it out if if uh, platformers are your thing. Switch getting some good games before PlayStation. Oh, uh, we we can't even discuss the the quality of some of the games on the Switch at the moment. I mean, it's just unbelievable. If you like narrative games as well, what are you talking about? It's, it's great. Oh what no, what are you talking about? We got Smash, Pokemon's coming. That's what I mean. They're, they're just unbelievably good. I don't, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And then on the other side, if you if you perform more prefer more narrative uh, heavy games, you know, we've got Florence, which I know is a, a mobile game as well. There's also uh, Florence. Yes, oh, it's fantastic. Um, uh, you may not like it. That. It's totally text based uh sort of thing and there's another one as well which i really should uh, remember um i'll remember next week as well uh, buried buried sands or something it's, they're both very good so lots of good narrative uh, indie stuff on the switch obviously um but let's let's move back to the playstation <laughs> for a little while at least uh anything anything else uh that's pretty much all i played i played some like vn visual nonsense but like other than that yeah it sounds like quite a bit this week i know that's good you got through quite a yeah quite actually a didn't have to work like 12 hours a day so like nice positive yeah good and you're up to i'll just have a quick look here you're up to oh 1478 so you've still got a got a little way to go before 1500 yet yeah but i still gotta keep back my mind because what's going to happen is i'm just like not going to notice and then i'm going to be like yes. oh, that's 1500 like p or whatever like awesome p what what a milestone what a milestone yes <laughs> Awesome uh, there's a lot of good ones at the moment i mean access denied with the platinum hacker shout out to uh, to uh, uh anyone who does that for number 600 uh or whatever else but there's there's a lot of good good you did that for there. 600 cj no i, I Is that what that think I, well i may have done it for 600 but i know someone just recently did. i did Congrats. do it i did do it for 600 <laughs> but i know someone more more recently did it as well who's on the upward rise it's also 600 following your footsteps well I, 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 th I think i think he's passed me already so <laughs> in one way or another uh so um yeah that's good that's a lot of games that's that's fun 
Yeah. So what have I what have I played this week? <laughs> yeah, what have you played, CJ? Well, I think I've fallen down the division two hole well and truly. I don't know what's going on there. I don't I don't normally get Uh-oh. sucked into games like this, but but I think I made a decision at the start of the week that it's very unlikely I'll play on this game because the trophy list is some of the trophies are quite challenging, uh, and they're also I don't, they're not glitchy. Well, maybe they are glitchy. It's a bit unclear. If it, I, some of it tracking, and you know, if you, if you die in the middle of things, it does or doesn't count, and it, it doesn't track, and then you can't do it again unless you're in someone else's game. There's a lot of this stuff going on, so I'm sure that'll be fixed out later. But that, that's a little bit too much for me. And also, I'm a little scared of the dark zone. I don't really want to go in there and get attacked and lose my stuff, so I don't really want to do those trophies. But I, just need a nightlight. Wait, that's it. Yeah, well, that's, just a nightlight. That's right. Well, the problem too is now that I've fallen down this this hole, I'm now sort of progressing on the on the loop that they want you to go on, where I'm moving up the world tiers, which really is probably not helping the trophies at all because it's just making the game harder. But but I'm enjoying it. I think I, I'm up to world tier three, and I think I know there is a world tier four, and I know five is coming, or, or maybe it came the other day or so uh, with the difficulty. So it's it's just a gear loop scale, but it's fun. You know, I'm sort of jumping in, playing with some randoms. I have a, a regular sort of buddy I found a little bit, and we've played a little together. And then the other night I was. Was playing in some uh, with two guys and they just dropped a whole lot of gear which again you know shocked me but i suppose this is standard in these games so that helped me out a lot uh but it, it's a it's a fun loop so i don't want to talk about that game anymore though because if, if it interests you you'll already be on it and if it doesn't then you definitely don't want to hear about it i'm sure uh i did a little bit more of the file app horse racing challenge just a little tip for that game it does have a simulate race option don't use it because even though it makes the game a lot quicker, the, when you win the races that are simulated, it doesn't count as one of the 250 race wins. So I think I have 60 race wins. Oh, joy. So what do you do? <laughs> you like did 500 races and you're like, I think something's not working yeah, here. Well, I, I did I did 60 of the 60 races legitimate and then I simulated a lot because it's sort of, I mean, the actual racing is just one part of the game. It's a management game as well, or very light management. So I, I enjoyed that side of it more. So I did simulate a lot of the races and then put a jockey on the, paid for the jockey on the horse or whatever to, to run it for me. But of course those, so I'd be way over 250 races, but those don't count. So now I, I need, I've got every other trophy in the game. So I need to decide whether I really want to race another 100, um, 140 races or not. And again, the races are fine. It, it's just the loading time. It's just a little bit monotonous between each race. If that's, if that's all you're doing. So I don't know, I might just leave that one there and that, that can stay at 97%, which is pretty good for me. Uh, what else did I, I try this week? Oh, I had a look at this far loan sales. This came out last week. We talked about it about it briefly. It had a very vague description, and I can I can assure anyone that's listening that it is also a very vague game as well. It's classified as a, a platform puzzle adventure indie. So I always get confused with 2D and 3D uh, uh, platformers. So I'm going to say this is like a 3D side-scrolling platformer. <laughs> and then I'm sure someone who's played it will listen and go, no, it's a 2D. <laughs> is it 2.5? Yeah, maybe 2.5 is, is the correct, I don't know, the correct thing. It's it's really strange. Like there's no, there's no instruction. I mean, no real instructions about what's going on. You sort of, uh, it's sort of, it, it almost strikes me as like a clicker, but a little bit more involved. Like you have to power up the, the 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 what do they call it some sort of a ship or whatever else and, and you you run it by a mixture of turning on the sails if the wind is wind is behind you or picking up these like cubes or basically any rubbish you can find and throwing it in the engine to burn for fuel uh, and it moves across and then every now and then you hit like a puzzle but the puzzles seem very very straightforward so far I mean I literally only played half an hour of it but I think the game is only like maybe two hours. Uh, anyway so I, I think like it's it's fun you know it's very it's sort of gray very gray and black scale with very little color um, and then juxtaposed with some very brilliant reds at times so it's nice it's a nice sort of idea or whatever else but I probably would recommend holding off on that it's it's kind of pricey for what it is I think and again I think it's one of those ones where the description's a little bit vague compared to what the game actually is but you know I mean if, if you're into something different in indie indie style maybe maybe check it out and then I think the only other thing, yeah. And did you ever play this game called Regalia of Men and Monarchs? Mm, doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, it's really strange. I don't really want to talk about it yet because I, I think I want to play more of it first. But it's a, I mean, it's a, I don't know what it is. Like, I want to say like a text-based RPG, but obviously it's got, you know, gameplay and everything else but it's very heavy on the the dialogue and some of the dialogue i don't know i don't know what to make of it yet some of it's really hilarious like it's it's poking fun at the genre and 
you know, in the game itself, I think. So, uh, you know, it, it, uh, as I said, I haven't played a lot of it yet, but it, it strikes me as good. One thing I... So it's like a NEP spinoff. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. It's like, it seems like a cross of a lot of things, I think. One of the things that's really bad in it, though, which actually I had to stop playing because I just couldn't handle it, is the combat system. So it's, it's a turn-based grid combat system, but it's incredibly slow in the way it works. Like, I mean, waiting for them to have their turn is slow. And then you have a lot of different options that don't really seem to do much different uh, things. Maybe as the game progresses, it, it will. So I don't know. But there is an option in the menu to adjust. Well, I mean, those turn-based grid things, I mean, that's usually what they used to be. They used to be slower. It's just nowadays, I think we get all these, like, action rpgs and stuff and stuff that are sped up because people are getting impatient yeah you- that's what games that's what they used to be they used to be like oh wait for opponent number one to move a couple squares then it zooms in on their other character they move a couple squares and you'd be watching them mm. it's like for like two minutes or whatever take their turn okay yes. one yeah minute. i mean they like it stopped on them they were thinking for like 30 seconds but I mean, you had to watch all their characters go through, like old fire emblems and stuff. That's how that. Oh yeah, I, no, I have no, I have no problem with turn based. Like I've, I've played a fair bit of uh, Dragon's Quest Eleven, which which is exactly that. Waiting, waiting for them to have their turn, you to have your turn. You know, Final Fantasy fourteen. It's all those things. So I'm fine with that as a, as a basis. But I just don't think maybe this is very re- rewarding or something. But. It, I, I don't know. Maybe as it develops, it becomes more rewarding. But the funny thing is, in the menu system, you can actually change the strength of your hits. So, you know, potentially you can make yourself 100% more powerful and make them like 1% powerful, which makes the battles a lot quicker. They, but they're still not, you know, one hit battles uh, a lot quicker. And I believe there is a way, I didn't read the guide, but I think you can actually skip all the battles if you want and it doesn't affect the trophies, which I like, I mean, Oh, that's the game we're talking. Yeah. I know what game we're talking. Yeah, about. I think that might not be a bad option. Like, check the guide because I, I said I haven't read it. That sounds incredibly no, boring. Well, oh for God. you, it probably would. It's like a fifteen-hour VN. Why yeah. Would you- well, I mean, it's yeah, that that is true. But I mean, you know, this it's it's a fetch quest type game as well, so it's a bit more than just a VN. But I, I think for the dialogue and stuff like that, I, I yeah, but I battles got to be like the most exciting part. Yeah, right? no, I totally agree. But I just don't think this battle system is that exciting. So I think. I don't know. Like, I mean, definitely give it a go if you try the game. But I just, I mean, I'd be very interested in someone else's opinion because it, it just doesn't feel rewarding to me. But, you know, I, I think for myself, I will probably turn it off because I am more interested in going into the game. But I just don't think I want to deal with that. It's just very clunky or something. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe it is a throwback to really old school style, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't I don't find it that that enjoyable. But that, that's just my my opinion and then the only other thing was I, I played some of the grand tour game i know we talked about this last week so again I, I won't talk too heavily on it i thought it was wrapping up on friday with the the i thought it was the final episode episode 13 but it turns out there is one more episode episode 14 but the reason I bonus was, episode a bonus episode yeah which is great you know I'm, I'm happy for another one also too because i hadn't done the grinding of the 50 uh 50 times races with every character and i have a little tip for that as well if, if you're going to play this game that is very monotonous and monotonous because of the loading times between the races. But if you do do it, I would recommend setting the races to seven, setting the car to the Rimac, uh, which is the, the fastest car, putting them on one of the slowest cars, uh, or you just uh, well, basically any other car, it doesn't matter, rubber banding the R2 button, and then just leaving your controller for about 50 seconds per race. It'll drive into the wall, but it won't matter. It'll still push it, and you still win comfortably. So you can actually go and do other stuff, or you can watch, watch something on Netflix if you want while you do it, because it's going to take about two hours. Per... Watch the show on Netflix you while can. you model your... Yeah, yeah. And it's about two hours per per fifty, and you need to do um, four characters, so two hundred. So, so I mean, it, it's it's a sizable amount of time wasted if you're not doing something else, and it's not that enjoyable. So, I definitely do that. But the reason I sort of bring it up is that some people have already got the platinum, but a lot of us don't have the platinum because we haven't completed the final episode yet and got all the gold. And apparently, the week before there was some glitch. I've never seen this happen before, but but maybe this you have where. The, the, before the pre, the last update, there was a glitch where when you finish that episode for some people, the episode 12, I think it was, you actually got the trophy for completing all the episodes with gold, even though you hadn't done 13, which has a trophy, or 14 sort of thing. So it's very strange. And if you look at it now, it actually the percentage for people earning all gold in Season 3 is actually higher than the percentage of people that have earned the gold in Season 3, Episode 13. So it's clearly a, clearly some sort of a glitch. So... 
I'm really hoping that that this is fixed in the final episode because I would like to fight them in this game, but I, we'll have to see see what happens. Have you, have you ever come across something like that before where the, the trophy is popped before you've even, you know, done the other trophies before it sort of thing? I... Uh, not really. Like, I can't no. think of an instance like that where the thing wasn't yeah. even a... It's unusual, so... I, I mean, you know, could they... It might have... They played on the moon. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Maybe they've already done it and it's coming back. So I don't know. So if, you know, if you're worried about completing that game, I'd give it another week just to make sure that that, that trophy does pop uh, for everybody else after episode 14. Um, otherwise, I don't know. There might be a workaround uh, discovered later. Otherwise, you might have to... I don't know, play it on another account or give it a miss or something, which would be a shame because it is a it is a very enjoyable enjoyable game. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's that's pretty much pretty much it. Just too many hours in the division for me this week. But I'm not sure that that will change. So we'll just have to live with that and and move on. I think that's enough of of what we've been playing this week. Shall we shall we take a look at what is coming out for us to play in the next week, Mister Unknown? Sure. You want to start or should I? Oh, look, I would love to start because the first one is Airport Simulator 2019. There are so many of these simulator games, air, airport, fire, simulator, there's just a ton of them. But anyway, you are the manager of a major international airport. Gradually, you will earn experience and your airport will grow. New runways and gates will be added and larger planes will arrive. No time to rest. So... I haven't tried one of these yet, but I'm I'm getting more and more tempted. <laughs> There's so many of them. Yeah, I don't know. I've never played one of those simulators. I know those like farming simulators. Apparently, you could do stuff for like five hours or something. And the rest was just auto after you had stuff stuff set up. Yeah, there was there, um an esport now. I don't know if we talked about this before. Farming simulator or something. Esport. Like what the heck? <laughs> All right. I'm gonna be the the best farming simulator player in the That's world. Right. Gonna be able to mow my lawn with precision and speed. Now, I was thinking about this too when um when they announced that. I was thinking, how the heck, how the heck do you like do this? So my thought was they have a uh, a field of grass, right? And you got like a riding lawn mower or a tractor or something, and you gotta make um you gotta like mow the grass as efficiently as possible. The problem is if you miss one blade of grass, it's like a strike. And if you miss like three grass, you just auto, uh, you stop at that point or whatever, or auto lose. So however close you can be to like overlapping the grass, but like (laughs) as precise as possible, but you gotta be careful because if you mess up, then you're you're just out. So I could see, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be like these um, announcers and stuff because they, they have those on esports nowadays. Yes. And uh, it'll be like, oh man, careful. He's he's there. He's, he's close. He's close. He's close. Oh, he missed the plate. He missed the plate of grass. He loses. <laughs> that's that's, that's going to be like the most exciting moment. Oh, uh, I need to see this. Farming simulator esports. Just, can you imagine the crowd difference? <laughs> They all come in for the Fortnite, Fortnite eSport World Championship, and then the next day, all the, all, all the you, got the, you got these dudes with these like straw hats and stuff sitting in the crowd. Oh, that's yeah, I tell yeah. you what, Epic need to get. Maybe it is with Epic, I don't know. They need to get on this. <laughs> it's just fantastic. Uh, I've got to look into that. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so Constructor Plus. We're not going too far from this uh, simulation thing. No, in this no. town, you've got to think big. Take on the role of a budding or property developer. Build yourself up from minor league housing crook. What? <laughs> to interplanetary pro- uh, property tycoon. So see, the moon is coming in this too. It's a theme. Mm. So wheeling, dealing, and thieving all the way. I didn't know that Constructor Plus was about thieving and crookery. Mm. This is maybe more interesting than I had thought it would be. Mm. Well, it is interesting because <clears throat> the original Constructor game came out, I'm going to say last year, but then I say that for everything. So it might have been the year before. And it, it had a plat or whatever else. And it is just like a city building game, but it is a little bit edgier, uh, you know, with sort of you're dealing with corruption and sort of, you know, that that side of, you know, crime and that side. So a bit, a bit of an edgy Sim City on a, on a smaller scale. And this I thought was DLC. But it also has a, a plat on it. So I think it's an extension of the game. So you can either buy this and, and maybe you get both the games or if you already have the game, this is an upgrade. 
uh, into this. And there is so another you plat the first one again and this one to get the plat? Yeah, but I think they're two sort of obviously they're different trophy lists. So, you know, there's obviously new things in this game. So it's one that I've had for ages that I have been interested in uh, for that side of things, but I, I haven't played, so I'm not sure. But, but I know I know quite a few people have played it, so it could be interesting. So the next one, Dangerous Driving with a one in the eyes. Nice. Dangerous Driving is a game about the sort of driving you want to do when no one else is looking. This game oh, you... like drinking uh, whiskey from a shotgun. <laughs> well, while playing your beta, yeah. Uh, this game, yeah. this game that was not in the description. This game gives you uh, the chance to live out that fantasy, to floor it in everyday cars at high speeds, weaving in in and out of traffic, and slamming the other cars right off the road. So, this looks interesting. I don't know. With this, I'm going to take a step. It looks, the image is only a license plate. How does it look interesting well, to you? The reason I... Oh, man, they made the eyes ones. Interesting. Yeah, so... Well, it, I don't know. You're a big racing fan, right? Yeah, so, yeah, a little bit. Anything driving is probably at least worth checking out in your mind. Yeah, well, I, I think it's... Um, I'm just going to uh, look this up really quickly because I, I didn't didn't do much prep this week. I apologize, listeners. Uh, the, this is by Three Fields Entertainment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a stab here because it's not it's yeah so they're the British company that's right so they had this really yeah that's right they did do they did Danger Zone too they also did this golf game uh or whatever else and so they're from this burnout dangerous golf yeah, dangerous golf yeah yeah so they use this crash mechanic that they sort of you know perfected in the burnout um uh, stuff so you've played burnout haven't you you know uh that. Uh, yes. Paradise. I never played the supposedly better original. Yeah, game. okay. So they were involved with the original, but but you would have played uh, in Burnout Paradise. You would have had to have played that crash mode uh, for a few trophies. I think it was where you you know you had to go into crash cam or whatever it was, and the cars rolling over, and you had to hit so many cars or, or get a certain score. Or you had to hit buses. Yeah, buses. That's right. You know when the cars like flipping over and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that's you know that that was sort of their their sort of well, what they based all this stuff on. So they sort of pioneered that that idea and that technology. And of course, it's much more advanced than the golf one, which is quite fun. And so they did do uh, Danger Zone games, which were not so great uh, along that that style. But they are a smaller studio, and so this is their next thing uh, here. And I'm just watching a little trailer of it. it. Does look quite fun. So if you like that arcadey sort of crashing, you know, rolling around style of of game that that could be one definitely to check out they're a sort of you know hidden gem studio i think all right dark quest 2 turn-based rpg where you control a party of heroes on your epic quest to defeat the evil sorcerer and his minions each map is designed to test your party's strength courage and sanity as you go deeper and deeper into the castle seeking the enemy sorcerer if it's like gauntlet well no it's turn-based gauntlet's not turn i see this image and i think gauntlet in my mind which it's a powerful image I don't know. I think it, like, judging by the picture and stuff, it's probably a game I would enjoy. I don't know if it'd be all that, it says deeper and deeper, but depth in terms of gameplay probably isn't all that deep. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I don't know. Who knows? I can't, can't really tell much from this game. If, if that Samuel game taught us nothing, you should definitely not judge a game by its picture or trailer. They may be two very different <laughs> things. <laughs> So I don't know about that one. Uh, so Earth. No, it has the font of it has the font of some game, and I can't think of what it yeah, was. Yeah, it does. It does it, look. Uh, it's it golden. It's like they ripped Rooney. the font off of something because mm. it looks so familiar for, to me, and I can't think of what it is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's sort of an old school font. I think I've seen that on old school PC. Games. No, there's a game. It's like a bigger name game too oh, okay. that has that. Ex- and I can't like I can't think of what it is right now. It's probably some big game, like probably like a ton of people play it and mm. whatever. Hugely possible. Maybe well, if it comes back, you can throw it out. Throw it out later. Uh, Earth Defense Force Iron Rain, year two, 2040, an action TPS where you will become one of the EDF soldiers and fight against the invaders from outer space, which ruined the world. More than fifty missions in five difficulties await your challenge. Mm. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, this has a fun picture of an alien where they're all fighting it. I assume it's some sort of alien with multiple arms. Also, probably a 300-hour yeah, play. Oh, really? Probably. I'm not playing it, so. <laughs> no, no. A lot of those Earth Defense Force games were, like, super oh, really? long. Oh. When it says five difficulties, I, I think they were all, like, you had to beat the... Do, like, everything on difficulty one, then do everything on difficulty... I think they were very mm-hmm. grindy and long. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, if you're, if you're looking forward to that, that will be awesome. What do we have what do we have next? Best game on the list. Best graphic on the list right here. Falcon Age. 
It is PSVR, unfortunately, but it says also PS4, so. Yes. All right, Falcon is a first, oh, first person. Mm. Mm. Single player action adventure as Era learned to hunt, gather, and fight to reclaim her cultural legacy in the lost art of falcon hunting against the force of automated colonizers. Bond with a baby falcon and go on an adventure. See, in this in this thing here, this little video, you get to fist bump a falcon, which would be <laughs> the best part of the game. It looks falcon awesome. Actually, this I falcon in this image looks so awesome. Yeah, like, yeah. The pet falcon, mm. like that. That would be sweet. It looks like the cross between a dragon and a falcon. Mm. It's like, it's got this, like, mm. I don't know, it's not a very falcony beak, but... Mm. There's definitely, I mean, the listener can't see, so, you know, but they're, they're having a very That's deep true. and meaningful, like, eye sort of conversation as well, aren't they? You know, in that photo. That's fantastic. Actually, the falcon in the video doesn't look nearly as good. Oh, doesn't it? Ah, uh, okay. Well, it is PSVR, so. I mean, it's, it's a different falcon. <laughs> so some... I'd feel ripped off if I bought the game for that falcon and then it was just this other one. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, that game can maybe falcon off. Uh, then, So the next one is Ghost 1.0, a mysterious agent capable of becoming a digital ghost sneaks aboard the Nakamura Space Station. This is where the fun begins. The station is well protected with its heavy defenses, never ending arsenal of weapons and mysterious artifacts. It will all have to be destroyed. Hmm. This actually might not be bad. Yeah, from, uh, sounds interesting. It looks kind of like uh, icy graphics. Yes. I mean, not, not <laughs> probably nowhere near the, like anything like it, but yeah. if it's a two platformer with guns and whatnot, hmm. I should probably look before I even make talk about 2d platformers on this game it's probably some like first person shooter and i'm like mm, mm. one one thing listener this week because we're recording a little bit later again we, we can use the playstation drop so we have a bit more uh a bit more clarity on what's actually coming out but one thing i'm always amazed with on this this site with these games is it very rarely tells you what type of game it is i mean some of them do but a lot of them they're just like that aren't they they're, they're very sort of, you know... Buy it for the awesome yeah, art Summaries of the game, but they don't tell you anything about Our the game. Our work on this is pretty good, though. I'm going to... Mm. Hold on. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks interesting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what, what about this next one? This next one interests me. What is a 2D platform, I think? Oh, oh, Metroidvania game. All right. Must buy. Metroidvania video game. Yeah, that's what it says in the description here. They should put that in the uh, in the bit on the side. <laughs> then we would have known. I mean, that would make me buy it. Just you just tell me a game's a Metroidvania, and I'm probably gonna, gonna buy it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you it's can good. start that after the message. All right. Um. Next one, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy. I've heard a lot of people really like this game. Yes. Become Phoenix Wright and experience the thrill of battle as you fight to save your innocent clients in a court of law. Play all 14 episodes spanning the first three games in one gorgeous collection. Solve the intriguing mysteries behind each case and witness the final truth for yourself. Here you get to slam slam the desks and say, I object. <laughs> I've heard some very good things about this game. It's such a shame this game is not on Vita. I think this would be a really good good place for this. But it, it looks like, or at this stage, it looks like only, only PS4. So that, that's a shame. I mean, you got remote play. That, that's true. Yeah. yeah that's it seems more like a, I mean... It's probably more VNE ish than like a normal game. It probably think, would be good. Yeah, I think so. Being probably involved and stuff. Yeah, and that's about a three quarter price game. That's right. Yeah, it could be could be quite fun. So then the next we've got Royal Roads. There once was a princess named Lana in a magical kingdom, set far from home by an evil witch's spell. Travel together with the princess, savor the beauty of her kingdom, make new friends, and overcome obstacles together to break the cruel spell and return home. It's lovely. That's lovely. I have no idea what that's about or what kind of game it is. No, no. But it's it's just it, it looks lovely. And and that's enough, I think, on that one. Uh next. I think the graphics look far worse than Ghost 1.0 and Falcon. But... <laughs> well, uh, the description looks lovely. You know, it sounds like All right. a little bit Shadow Gate. The, the gnome with your Shadowgate is one of the most beloved adventure titles in gaming history. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Uh this console version builds Upon the massively reimagined remake of the original Shadowgate and features a refined user interface and intuitive wheel-based icon system to help players along on their quest. Have you ever heard of Shadowgate, CJ? I have not. I have not. But then, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of what I played is not the most beloved titles in gaming history, so that does not surprise me. So, if it's... 
a reimagined remake. So this is basically they're saying the remake of the remake, I think, in a, in a different way of saying it. I just want to see how old Shadowgate is. Is this something from like 1995? I don't know. It's a very blurry uh, cover. It's, oh, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a point and click adventure from 1987. Oh, wow, point and click. See, again, you would have no idea that was a point and click from that description. Well, I assumed it was kind of old, mm. but I didn't think that old. It was originally on the NES, oh, wow. and then they the remake on 3DS, and then now we're getting it on PS4. Coming coming to PS4 soon. Uh, then we have Super Weekend Mode. It's a good name. No matter how you look at it, there is nothing nice about stealing, and unfortunately for a princess, she's going to have to learn this the hard way. When that guy claims her possessions for himself and sets off with them. So look, that is fantastic. That's actually one sentence. That is fantastic. How many? One, two, three. Oh, wait, there's no period in that thing. There are three commas though. No matter one how you that's, 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 that's um, it's an impressive uh, use of the English language again there. Yeah, fantastic. Good English. Good English. Little little tip. Often it's better to have a full stop and start a new sentence than just keep spewing out. <laughs> garbage okay so i'm not going to give that game any more attention because if you can't learn to write wait, wait, wait. I, I think don't... hold on this is the this is the one that's like rats making right oh is it it looks sounds know. very familiar and looks the graphics look from yeah this is the one okay well if it's 10 minutes i'll probably play it it probably is probably. <laughs> unfortunately oh. it's probably like actually really fun and then it's just like well we pulled a metagal <laughs> Look at this no, next one. I commented you about it? that and I got ignored. Oh, did you? Yes. Let's not. Let's right, not. Anyways, Ultra Wings Flat. Ultra Wing. What? Flat? Yeah, I guess having flat wings probably better than having like round wings, like just cylinders, I would imagine, if you're having a, an airplane. Pilot multiple aircraft to complete a variety of missions across a beautiful, stylized open world. Pop balloons, perform the, in thrilling air races, take photos, and so much more. Ultra Wings is truly the ultimate hobbyist aircraft game for the PS4. I would think if you're like a hobbyist aircraft, you want more realistic looking stuff here. This looks very cartoony. It's nice color style. Yeah, but like ultimate hobbyist, I would think like if you were an airplane hobbyist, you just want like the most realistic looking thing you could possibly have. I could be wrong. We'll probably say that, and then, then it'll be almost like full sim. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Vamporum. Vamporum, is that right? Uh, Steampunk Vaporum. Dungeon Crawl. Vaporum. It's not sorry. about vampires, CJ. Oh, no, there's no M. Sorry. Yeah. Vaporum. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an invisible M. Vaporum is a grid-based dungeon crawler RPG in an original steampunk setting inspired by old-school classics of the genre. Stranded in the middle of an ocean in front of a gigantic tower, the hero has to find out where the place is, what happened there, and most importantly, who he is. So one, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. That's the use of five commas in one Good sentence. Good job, That's, Vaporium. I've never, I've read quite a lot of things. I've never seen that. That's exciting. <laughs> Actually, this doesn't sound that bad either. Uh, Another RPG. I like RPGs. I like dun- there, There's quite a lot coming it's out. It's Steampunk Dungeon Clara too, so that shouldn't be terrible. Mm. Mm. And what's the? there's quite a lot of games this week, isn't there? What's the last one? There's actually a lot of RPGs in those lists. It's like half RPGs. Yes. Uh, I think yeah. this sounds like an RPG too. Um, mm. All right, so Zan- Zanky, Zero, uh, Zanky Zero Last Beginning. For the ruins, dungeons, and islands in this post-apocalyptic world through the point of view of eight protagonists in each chapter and explore dungeons, towers, and islands to uncover the deadly sins of the protagonist's past as they fight for survival. One sentence again. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think this one actually... Oh, this one has three commas too. Yeah. Oh, it's man. only in the light. Maybe they just got tired towards the end and they just decided to leave out <laughs> punctuation. Yeah. That's right. So there is a hot tip if you want to work for Sony. You know, English is not a it's not an important <laughs> written English is obviously well, not. Does Sony important. make the PlayStation? Who makes the PlayStation? Well, it's a, it, well, I didn't think it was. It is. I think, so yeah, it's on their side, so I think it comes from them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I did, they've actually changed it recently. I, I I didn't like it initially. I liked the old one, but I'm I actually I like this one much better now because they they put it on a white background. They they've been experimenting the last few weeks, but this is much easier to read, and and it's yeah, it's usually a little little. Bit more, bit more coherent than than today, I think. But I don't, I don't know. 
Well, anyways, this game sounds sounds like decent. Looks very JRPG. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Yeah, it looks. Uh, I don't know anything about it, but I mean, it could be very drawn out and boring. Who knows? But yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure, but it, that could be one to to check. I, uh, I wonder if that's a port of a of a, of a game. I suppose it probably is. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, it's worth something to check. So just I just forgot uh, in the last couple of weeks, there were two games that came out that we didn't pick up on. Um, they would have come out on the blog, but there isn't a lot of information about them. So I thought I'd just throw it out there just because we mentioned RPGs quickly. One was called Outward. There's two stacks of this, NA and EU. You will definitely not be stacking this game, though, if, you, if it did interest you. It's very long. Uh, oh. it, it was a bit glitchy when it first came out, but it has, my understanding is it has been fixed. If you like old school uh, isometric uh, RPGs, it, it is pretty good, but it is very old school all the way down it's a very small team graphically it's a it's sort of a survival rpg so there are elements where you obviously have to eat and you have to drink as well but if that sort of appeals to you it's there's going to be a ton of content in it it's also very difficult at the start i assume as you as you level through it gets a little bit easier Uh, but one of the cool features of it is it does have a a co-op in it i think an online co-op but which which is you know great if you have someone online but also local co-op where it splits the screen Uh, so i've been trying a little bit of that and it's actually pretty good. So, you know, if, if that sort of appeals to you, if you have someone, you know, that, that sort of likes games that you're, you're with, you know, or, you know, your friends or whatever else, then um, it's worth a try. And, uh, you know, it, it's just something, I don't know, I haven't come across a lot of RPG in local co-op like that before so but as i said you know a word of warning it is by a very small team so graphically it's very sort of rough in in places and things like that but you know check out a video first yeah and so the other game that i was going to just just briefly mention in the rpg vein is this seven uh, enhanced edition so my understanding this is an older game another isometric uh, isometric rpg game uh that again it looks really good and fantastic and i've read i know it doesn't have too many owners on the ps4 yet but i've read that it, it is supposed to be very good so i'm going to try try that this week in fact i've lined up a ton of games to try this week i'm gonna have a bit of a gaming how many what's the what's the number well i've got sekiro there i didn't want to start it when i was feeling sick because i thought i was already frustrated enough uh so i've got that there generate zero i've got, I've got a kingdom hearts big kingdom hearts week this week so there's, there's a ton of stuff and then a load of some smaller digital stuff so hopefully i'll have something something to talk about on those next week so then i thought for the news this week we'd just touch on the bafta game awards now i didn't watch this and i, I understand you didn't watch this either unknown is that correct I didn't know this thing existed until I saw a Discord message a week ago. Yeah, look, I didn't know it existed either. So BAFTA, just in case you don't know, is the British Film and Television Award. So I'm familiar with that. Uh, you know, it plays a big scene, obviously, in movie TV and also in, in my field in music. It's very well recognised. I didn't actually realise they had a game section. So that that's a, a poor reflection on myself because that's actually been running for quite some time. So I thought what we would do, right, you know, we don't want to get bogged down in this, but we'll just have a little bit of fun with it. I'll sort of just say the, the category and then list the four nominees and then uh, Unknown can just take Take a stab at what game he thinks, which came out of the, the nominees he liked the best, and then we can sort of say who won. So just a bit of fun. Yeah, I had not. I have not looked up this list, by the way. Yeah, perfect. In a couple of these games, there might be some one, one or two games that aren't available on the PS4. So obviously, you know, if we don't know about them, that, would, that, that, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, video games in general. Yeah, I, I'm not going to do all the categories, mainly just the PS4 related ones. But one or two, uh, one game in, in seems to come up a bit in some of them. So the first one is artistic achievement. Uh, so there was uh, Detroit Become Human, Gris, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2, or The Return of Oprah Dean. So artistic achievement. What was the second game? Uh, the second game was Gris. So I don't know if you know. Oh, this is Risk. Uh, so did Gris. This is a, a Switch release game. So you're probably not familiar with that game. Yeah, so I suppose, I mean, out of those, I, I don't know. What was the first one? We had like the big blockbuster hits. And what was Yeah, the- so we had Detroit, uh, Marvel, Spider-Man, and Red Dead. Oh, Red Dead. Uh, Grist. Because I don't think any of those others were very artistic anyway. They were just trying to get good graphics. Yeah, Grist, Grist, if you haven't played it and you do have a Switch, uh, unfortunately it's not available on PS4 yet, but I think it, it will be coming to PS4 and Xbox at some point in the future. Uh, obviously by an indie uh, uh, studio, uh, Nomada Studio, uh, published by Devolver Digital. Yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic game. It's only very short. It's extremely artistic. It's sort of like Journey in a way, uh, but it is a platformer, side-scrolling platformer. It has some fantastic music in it. So it would have been great to see that win, but it was actually this return of the Oprah Din, which, again, is not available uh, on console, my understanding. It's only on PC. I think it's also on iPad. Uh, it's a mystery game. So I've heard 
Is it art? It's artistic though. Yeah, it like... really is. In it, it's by Lucas okay, Lucas Pope. So it's a little bit like a, a little bit in uh, gameplay uh, tricky. I think like uh, you know using your mind and stuff. It's a puzzler, uh, mind and stuff. But I've heard some things about it. I've read consistently things about it. It does sound fantastic. So that is a game that. I need to check if it is on iPad. If it is, I'm going to put it on before I go away and take it with me. So that was uh, artistic. So the next... I was going to be mad if, like, God of War or something, or Spider-Man won. Those are not artistic. Okay, good. They have good graphics, yes, sure. I would agree. <laughs> not the category. Yeah. The category is not best graphics. It's most That's artistic. Right. Which is... Two different things. No, they don't even deserve to be in the category, right. in yeah. my opinion. That's cool. Yeah, I... I... They just got. They just put a bunch of money into it, and they're popular. That's the only reason. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and one of the things I like about the BAFTAs, again, I have no idea in the games because, as I said, I didn't know before. But I know in music, it, it, it is separate from the Hollywood scene. So, so the winners in this, you know, for soundtracks and composers, it is quite respected in our in our industry. So, I, I think they're perhaps the games also maybe a little more independent, maybe a little bit more open and focused than than some of the other game awards that we see. Uh, so the next one is Audio Achievement uh, Award. So the category Degrees are oh, sorry, the, the nominees were Battlefield 5, Detroit Become Human, God of War, Marvel Spider Man, Red Dead Redemption 2, or Tetris Effect. Tetris Effect. Yeah, look, again, I would have gone, I would have agreed with you. It's got a, it's amazing use of, of sound uh, in that. What game. does Battlefield 5 sound? Oh man, look at our, listen to these <laughs> every half a second. I don't know. These machine guns going off. That doesn't. <laughs> That sounds, doesn't sound like an amazing, oh, man, we have the most realistic-sounding bullets ever. To, to see uh, Battlefield Five in any awards nominations at the moment is surprising, so I'm not sure what it's doing in any category, but, you know, congratulations. So, no, the winner was God of War. So you've actually played this game. I have played a bit of it. Would you? Did you find the, the audio, you know, in, impressive in that? So this is not necessarily no. the music. This is more like the sound design, I think. You didn't find it overly like their voices and stuff. Like oh, sort of like the not, uh, not impressed. But also the like the uh, the the secondary sounds. So like maybe footsteps, water, waterfalls, like birds, like any of that sort of you know uh, environmental sound as well. I don't know myself. I just want my music and my beeps from Tetris. Quite honestly, yes, yeah, I agree. I think you know that that's sort <laughs> of that is this. So then, shall we have a look at uh, I don't know uh, the best British game. That's great that they have this category. So uh, nominees, we have 1111 Memories Retold, uh, Forza Horizon 4, Red Dead Redemption 2, The Room, Old Sins, and Overcooked 2, and Two Point Hospital. So there's quite a few games there I've never heard of as well. So um, I'm going to say the winner is Red Dead Redemption, but my choice would be Overcooked 2. Yes, interesting enough. I, I did like Overcooked too. So the winner, I'm just reading this category. So Rockstar, yeah. So it's it's best British game, but it mustn't be game made in Britain. No, it's not. Okay, so that, that's a little confusing. So the the winner was actually Forza Horizon. Wait, wait, wait. It's best British game, but it's not made in Britain. Well, is Rock- isn't that the- Rockstar is you know, not Britain. not British company? Rockstar are they? How are they? They shouldn't be in the category. Yeah, no, no. So it's just it must be the best game they like because I don't think two point. Uh, British. No, I should have checked that, but Rockstar, definitely not British uh, studio. So Bandai Namco are definitely not uh, British either. So for 11-11 memories we're told. So it must just be, I don't know, it's a broad category. Games that the British people like, maybe that's what it is. But the winner anyway... Probably more what it is. Well, well, maybe it's not a surprise that the winner is... Oh man, we had, we had a British writer in the thing. It's British. <laughs> well, maybe it's not a surprise that the winner is Forza Horizon 4, because that is made by a British studio. So <laughs> Playground Games. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, right. I'll, I'll accept that one yeah. i'm i'm okay with that. yeah i mean the game is phenomenal uh, obviously playground games uh microsoft studios and now microsoft can claim them as an exclusive studio probably the best pickup uh they made uh, at e3 last year announcement uh fantastic studio fantastic series of games if you like arcade racing and it is good i just give a shout out though as i said a lot of these games i think are on other consoles uh the room and stuff but 11 11 memories retold if you haven't played it again it's heavy, heavy uh, sort of a walking sim narrative with branching paths uh, and collectibles it's it's really good. It's in a like a um a, a sort of like a I'm trying to think of the word an impressionist. There we go, art style. So you know if you're familiar with impressionist paintings, that's sort of what you can expect. And it is really beautiful. It has a, it has a, it does have multiple endings, which are slightly different. It's not just text based sort of endings. So you know I definitely recommend that game. I thought it was it was very good. Uh, as well then let's have a look oh you might know some of these ones as well the best debut game uh so we've got beat saber debut. uh well for best new game uh 
Okay. Yeah. So we got our. No, it's just how you started. Oh, sorry. Sorry. All sorry. right. It's my Australian uh, isms coming through. Uh, Gris again. Florence Donut County. Uh, Coltus Simulator. Oh, wow, that sounds awesome. A beat... Coltus Simulator. That sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, beat Saber or Yoku's Island Express. So I think you've played some of those games. I have. Um, so best debut. Um, I bet you Beat Saber wins. I haven't played Beat Saber. Should we go with that? Donut County. There's a certain person that wants me to choose Donut County, but I don't think that's going to win. <laughs> I think it's. Well, can I say it's one of the games you've played? I'm pretty sure you've played it. I like Yoku's Express. I didn't like the fact that I got so lost in the thing and like it just took me forever to traverse. It was a really cool concept. It was like a Metroidvania pinball game. I felt very lost at times, but I mean it was it was good. Like they made it well and stuff. I just think Beat Saber is gonna win. Well, I mean Beat Saber is, is a fantastic game, but it actually was that Yoko's Island Express. I, I haven't played that. It's is it like really it's a pinball game or something? Is that right? Or am I Yeah, you're like this little bug and you go like like you know how pinball like machines work, you get shot out and you mm. use the flippers and stuff? Well you like mm-hmm. kind of flip yourself into different I don't know, if you wanna like call them tables or whatever, but and then sometimes you're like outside and you like bounce off of like bumpers and it gets you to a different like kind of table section or whatever you want to call it and then there's collectibles i thought it was a good game i had fun with it when you zoom out on the map it's so small like to see what you're trying to go to and that's problems i had but it was good it was a good game okay interesting we'll just do we'll just do maybe two two or three more categories so we're missing quite a few here one one i will give a shout out to but we won't cover as the game beyond entertainment i really like this category because this is sort of games that are pushing the system but a lot of these games are not on our playstation 4 like all pushing the 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 genre i suppose in in new directions uh new styles so i mean if you play on multiple consoles particularly pc that would be something to to look out there because there are some very interesting games in that that category but we won't cover that uh the next one music so we have, uh, for music, we have Celeste, uh, Flo- Saber. Florence, Far Cry 5, God of War, Gris, and Tetris Effect. We do not, I think Beat Saber may have come out too late to be in summer, although it wasn't. It was the in one. the other category. Yeah, I don't know. I know it was too late for. Of course, it's not really music. original music, right? It's just like other songs yeah. that were already. No, this would be original composition. Well, maybe that's why. Yeah. Yeah. So, not God of War, probably is, but I'm not going to go with that. Uh, Celeste. Yeah, I haven't played this. It's got some good a good soundtrack. I actually haven't played it yet, but the game I would really like. I like the style, but oh, you haven't played I Celeste? Oh, I thought you had. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not. I'm not sure. I have heard good things about that. It was uh, God of War, so mass mass produced, mass budget. I imagine yeah. fully fully orchestrated Why? as well. Imagine because they put they threw some money at it. Yeah, I mean the Tetris effect has a great great soundtrack as well. So you know, I mean that's a pretty cool. I'm a bit little. That would have been my second choice. Tetris. Yeah, a little surprise surprise that Florence is there because I mean it's a very, it's a forty minute game, so that you know, I mean the music is fine, but it's not massive. And Far Cry Five, like yeah, I, I don't know. I mean they're they're all good, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think some of the indie titles. I mean they don't have the budget obviously to pay for full orchestras and stuff, but some of them have very interesting interesting ideas so yeah I, I don't know about that one and then why don't we do narrative as well because I, I know i know that's oh what my you, god is god of war on I, this know, list? I know you love narrative let me guess god of war red dead redemption spider-man P- pretty much so we got florence uh frostpunk so i uh, it, it is a ps4 game so i'll just leave out the ones that and return of Oprah did so it, it's between uh god of war marvel spider-man or red dead redemption 2 which one would you would you say has the best having not played two of none of them <laughs> i don't i don't want okay so just like i don't like hate these games but i am not nearly like i don't feel like i feel like a lot of their the reason they're popular is just because they're big studios and people like say oh man this is great god of war oh man hype god of war i am much more i'm not a huge triple a fan so if it sounds like i'm bashing these that is kind of a little bit of the backstory but I do not feel like these games were 11 out of 10s or whatever. Like, they were decent games, sure, but they weren't, like... I don't think they were as good as it's projected that they are and whatnot. So I'm going to go with... Um, this is Best Narrative? Best Narrative, yes. Wait, what were the other games that weren't PlayStation? Oh, well, they, they can't. They didn't win, but there was Florence, uh, Frostpunk, oh, uh, and Return of Opera. Yeah. 
No, no, no. So it was, it was one of the three games that won. Red Dead Redemption, Marvel, or God of War. One of those three. You, you did play God of War, though, didn't you? I did play God of War. I've not yeah. played Spider-Man. I have no. Spider-Man. I haven't played it. And so I, did you think the story in God of War or the narrative was good in God of War? I don't know. No. Not I mean, I guess the ending was okay. Like, yeah. if you're going by that, it's probably okay. Like, it's... It has an ending where it's like kind of a surprise lead into another game, but it's not. I, I don't know. I guess it's just like Kratos as a character. I don't really care all that much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd rather have some like Kingdom Kingdom Hearts three. That's what I go with. I don't care that it didn't come out last year. Yeah. Oh, look, I mean, I think the the absences from this list are staggering. I think there are a lot many better options, but you, you're going to have to lock one in. I'm going to hold you to one. Which, which one do you want to out of the three? Let me flip a three-sided coin here. <laughs> Silence is not an option. I bet you, I think God of War won. <laughs> yes, you, you're right. God of War. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as I said, I haven't played enough. I've played a, a bit of that, but, you know, so I can definitely see this. And there. I thought Marvel, Marvel Spider-Man was good. I, like, I didn't find the story amazing or anything. I thought it was great. I enjoyed it. Uh, whatever else, I don't. I don't understand Red Dead Redemption Two. It's such a big game, so I'm sure it has a great story. But when the games become so big, it's a bit like Final Fantasy XIV. It's really hard to hold the narrative thread. So I, I don't know. It's not the fault of the game for being so long or anything. But I think in a char- uh, category that's narrative, I would have thought something that that you can hold the thread. Maybe a smaller experience or more contained, like fifteen, twenty. Okay, never um, mind. On Cage Kingdom Hearts, you can't. You can't. Uh, yeah, I mean that. That's true. You can't follow that. Convoluted <laughs> is like crazy. Yeah, and I think a lot of indie games have like some of them are short, but they have some really interesting stories to tell. So I, I don't know there. And so how about for the last one? Because a lot of these other categories don't don't interest us. Our best game of the year. So for according to the BAFTA, we've got Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Astrobot Rescue Mission, Celeste. God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, or The Return of Oprah Dinn. So I can let you know it was a game that's on PS4, so it was not Return of Oprah Dinn, but it was one of the others. All right, make my day. Please be Celeste, although it's going to be God of War. <laughs> yes, it is God of War. Yeah. Unfortunately, not Celeste. <laughs> although, you not know, Celeste. Anyway, I mean, it's just their opinion, obviously. But, you know, you know, congratulations on being nominated. It's good. And I think they're all solid games. Like Celeste is great. Astro Bot I've played a bit of. It's really good in VR. It's it's very fun. And uh, I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey is really good as well. I'm about halfway through that. And I think it, it's it's very solid. So We need some JRPGs on these lists. What, what? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's no Dragon oh, Quest Eleven. What's up with that? None, none of that. So I, I don't know. I, I suppose I'm not sure how these are voted for, but I suppose they're sort of mass appeal to it. No, degree. actually, I have a I have an issue of how these get get nominated. It is not the people like I don't know if you saw the Game Awards. Sorry, this is going longer than probably you wanted, but that's okay. The the uh, the Game Awards last year, at the beginning of the Game Awards, they said these have been nominated based on reviews of these games from, like, review sources or whatever. And then we took, like, the top ones. That is not a good way to do it. Like, and their, their claim was that um, they didn't want social media engineering or whatever, whatever their term was, about getting another game up on the list. Like, they didn't want some, like, 4 out of 10 game getting up there yeah. because everyone voted for it or, like, on Twitter, like, made a bunch of accounts. I don't know. But you're doing it this way. That's not fair either no. because it's just biased. Like, okay, like, take God of War. What did IGN give it? Probably, like, a 10 out of 10 uh, or I'm 9. Very close to it, I think, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's a 10 out of 10, 9 out of 5. I think... You, I think you got biased towards the game from people over there. That's true, but I think uh, Celeste, I think got a ten. I'm very, sh- I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah, so, that one though, I think is probably fair. Mm. I think that one's fair. It's, it's these super big AAA games: God of War, Red Dead Redemption, Assassin's Creed. Mm. All these games that just have these. Well, one, they got fan bases, but two, they got these. They got a lot of money mm. to also give out review copies of and course. stuff like that. Like, I don't know if they do this, but throw some money under the table to the editors or whatever. Hmm. If you're viewing them, you probably want to keep on good relations with the studio because it helps out your your company or whatever. So you don't want to, or you want to give them a better rating just because of that. It just, it doesn't seem fair to me. 
I would much rather it be way wi- more wide open yes. how you vote for these things. Yeah. I think with any of these things, though, like, I mean, the list of, of nominees is more interesting to me than who won. I feel that about everything. You know, I don't I don't read movie reviews. I don't read book reviews before I read things. I, I make a decision on, you know, like maybe more lists or word of mouth and stuff. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not guided by, a, you know, a reviewer or whoever makes these decisions. But I think the lists they put together are always interesting because it gives you ideas about games that, you know, are potentially good that you might like. I think, I don't know. I think, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the list is almost always just big name games too. Yeah, I think there's an L. I think, and then also you get to the, you get to that next phase where you're voting, and the average person that's voting hasn't played most of these things. But have they seen God of War ads, or have they played God of War? Yes, they have. So they're going to vote for God of War. That's true. Yeah, and and this is I, like, I mean, this is one of the things. Like, I mean, it's impossible to play every game that's coming out, you know. And I mean, even if you're if you're playing most of the games, then you're probably only playing very small snippets of it. So it's hard to give some sort of informed opinion whatever else you know it really is just subjective and personal but i think you know i think that's the, the value of podcasts and things as well and, and you know even written media on certain sites is that you'll identify with certain people you might you might listen to someone and, and not agree with their opinions and also you don't don't identify with them but you'll find people that you know game similar or like similar games that that you do and you can sort of you know you can get an insight at least into to it because these are such time intensive things you don't want to dump time and money into something that you're not going to enjoy obviously you know so it's just, it's just a matter of fighting i think a lot of people play games and, and talk games but they don't have a lot to say which is you know it's totally fine as well you know but i think you know if you're clear on your opinion it doesn't matter if people like it or not at least you have an opinion and uh you know yeah you guys can hate me for not not yeah i mean i mean a lot of people i mean a lot of people you and i know i know play a lot of games you know i mean it looks like we play a lot but there are people we know that play a stack of games but they wouldn't really have much to say about those games because they're not really engaged with them or, you know, they're, they're playing them multiple times or whatever else. So I think you just have to find people. That, and, I mean, there will be people that like that style of playing too so that they'll appeal to them. But it's just, you know, finding just different games. I mean, as I said, you know, there's, there's games out at the moment that unfortunately the, the trophy list is still not up on the PSN. And these games will get buried because nobody knows about them. And some of them are great, like a shout out to Unknown Fate and also the developer that I reached out to the other day. I know you're working hard to get it on the store. I really hope you do because the game is fantastic uh but i unfortunately yep has my name yeah. it's gotta <laughs> but, be good. but unfortunately until you do it's gonna really kill that game you know and i know they know that uh, I, I i gathered the frustration from the email there's a lot of options for other games as well so you know if, if you're playing stuff that's a little bit off mainstream as unknown says non AAA, and you like it write down somewhere that you like it or record you know tell people you like it because it's the only way a lot of people will find out and, and give it a go uh, otherwise, they do just get get trapped on all the the AAA games, which is fine. But they often don't know these other things. Other things exist. So I don't know. That was a, that was a bit of fun. We now know what the BAFTAs think of of games, and we we now know it exists. Oh, there is one more news item. I don't know if you saw Borderlands. The PS3 version got DLC. Like the Japanese, one, I guess it didn't have Claptrap's DLC. What the heck is that? Mm. How long ago did the game come out? Like, what? That's a long time. Like, how old is that game? The game's got to be, like, six years old or something. Wow, it's just only the Japanese... Did all the other stacks have that DLC, or...? Well, the US... I played the US one. So the Japanese finally get to experience Claptrap's journey, or whatever. The game came out in October 12th, 2010. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What the heck? It's going to suck if you sold your Japanese copy. (laughs) It's, it's, It's very late. I wonder... It must be coinciding with the... The re-release for the PS4 version. This yeah, but it just well. seems weird. Mm, maybe they just forgot to push the upload button six years ago. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> oh we have this sitting here. All right, let's let's make our, our couple of bucks. And imagine, I imagine people earned the season pass back then. I went, they just thought it was never coming. I suppose. Yeah, they they got they got ripped off compared to everyone else. I don't know. Yeah, actually, I right. just we'll we'll move on. But that Borderlands is a game that I picked up as well, the remaster. So maybe I'll try that this week, and we can. Yeah, I had fun with it, and I'm not even a big first-person shooter fan, so. All right, spam of the week time. Excellent. Which we got, some, we got some, There's some, we got some big ones. What are you looking at? All right, so first off, this annoyed me seeing this. Speaking of Japanese DLC and whatnot, from earlier, Broken Sword, Serpent's Curse, Japanese stack of a game that came out like. What, five years ago? I'm not really happy to see this. This is DLC or this is another stack? Four years. No, this is another this is a stack of the thing. I don't know this game. 
three hour point and click. Oh, point and click. Okay. Here, like four four years later. It's not hard or anything. I just this one's on PS4 though. Yeah. Just to put another like stack of there, I guess get some more money or whatever. But mm. oh, well, three hours you said. Well, let's look into that. Maybe it's four or five. I see we have tarot reading premium. So this is a psychological. Yeah, thing. that's the other thing. Not not only one stack. But following the, the trend of two stacks for these potentially five-minute games, one was like a half hour and the other ones were like ten minutes, all you got to do is start and finish reading, examine a card, zoom in on a card, load a saved reading card, and load one saved reading. Five minutes, yeah. They know, what, they know how to charge for these games, too. My guess is t- uh, five minutes. Oh, might be more involved. Oh. Multiplayer trophy. Oh, there's a multiplayer trophy. I think there was... Some sort of multiplayer in the last one too. That would suck mm. if this was online, but I bet you. Yeah. And these things aren't yeah. cheap either. These are like twenty bucks. I thought like fifteen. CJ, do you want to play a uh, tarot reading with me? Yeah. Well, I would love to take your tarot at some point. Yeah. I think that would be fantastic. Only if you'll read. There is tarot cards in um in in uh shapeshift and detective. Key point in that game. You know what we should do? I just had a thought. The Knight of Swords, deadly. I think what we should do is we'll do that tarot reading at some point together. We probably won't record it, and then we can talk about it. That will be fantastic, the results we got on each other's tarot reading. I'll make a note of that. Uh, we should race. Yes. The... Who can read the tarot's fastest? <laughs> we'll see. Tarot's. We'll see, we'll see what the future is, whether, whether we'll make it to episode seven or not. That'd be tragic, wouldn't it, if the tarot says no. Uh, what else we got? Uh, this tr- All right. We... What else? I see there's another um, art Far money. Lap. Oh, Far Lap. Yeah. Have you already played that. I don't think that's short. About that's about 20 movie. plus hours. Was Bouncy Bullets out when we talked last time? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Yeah, this is another like stupid five minute thing, I bet you. Oh, you got a couple levels, but they're probably like shoot one dude, level done. Shoot two dude, second level done. You know, I'm guessing that's what that is. Probably a bad game. We've got uh, the the uh, last, uh, uh, well, it's root letter, our uh, last uh, letter. Sorry, root letter, last Another answer. Another root letter stack. There's so too many. And that's the, if you're looking for that one, that's the Asian, Asian version. I'm not surprised. Because, you know, this is only a stack like three of ten, right? So. The, the only plus on that game is uh, that it is quicker than the original root letter. Check the guide, but there's a way apparently of skipping chapter eight or something, I don't know, on multiple playthroughs. So just read the guide on that. That it, it's a little bit less less painful. Uh, if you're looking for a VN to skip, we've got another Art Mundy game, uh, Modern Tales of Age in, of Invention, for you this week. Yep, yes. another another same old, same old. But you get to play on casual. Apparently, apparently. You do yeah. So that that will be which is like skip all my puzzles, hidden object scene, show me where the things are. I always feel weird playing those games. Like when I like you have to play so much on expert. And then when you do like the bonus chapter and you can choose casual, I'll sometimes just choose expert because I'm like worried. There's no trophy for it, but it's just like, I really don't want to have to do this again. I don't know if it's probably just me that feels that way, but it's like. Oh, no, I find those games, yeah, they're grating. But there's no bonus chapter by the look. There's no expert trophy, so that will be a lot lot easier, maybe quicker, I suppose, too. Hopefully one playthrough. And I believe the lovely The Mind is a City has already guided that game. So fantastic if if you're waiting to play that. Uh, Truba Brook, Truba Brook. This is a point and click as well. I don't know how long this will be. Uh, no one's planted it yet, but then also only at, it's not actually out yet. So there's a couple of review copies, obviously, to certain people there. Uh, that's quite a bit. There's more. Know. We're not done. Oh, please. When are this one? Well, this one interests me. This Gladiators. Uh, oh, no one's managed to finish it yet. It's only a hundred percent game, so we might pass on that. The Gladiators. <laughs> I just opened up and look at the graphics. You got the oh, it's, yeah. Barian dude it's with this mohawk fighting a. Yes. <laughs> oh man, this is this is a yeah. quality game right here. Yeah, I'm not sure. It might be. It's either local co like local cop or it's a uh, online multiplayer because you got to win rounds. I'm not sure. Uh, or my, I suppose it could technically be single player against the AI. Five match winning streak. We got more stacks of Walking Dead final season disc. <laughs> So there's two discs I, in now. No, we don't. We don't yeah. need more. We don't want to play Walking Dead four times. No, no. Well, they've got to recoup some money there. So good luck. I suppose. Money. I suppose. It'd be interesting to know how many people would stack that four times. Because that, that's that's pretty committed. I think a decent amount. I don't understand I why. So. I'm not going to do it at this point. 
I'm debating even playing the thing, to be honest with you. Like, what, to take, like, 12-something hours? At this point, that's, like, borderline not worth it to me. No. And I think it's also, it's not like the others where you just sort of, as you say, you can put the controller down. I think this one you have to make some saves and go back. I think there are... Yeah, and collectibles. Yeah. Kind of like, um... Yeah, I'm not sure. And the apes, too. I'll play one version, but I want to see how it finishes, but I'm not going to play I don't even know what the story is anymore. I just skipped through. No, it's just so long. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Did you see any more? Yes, we got more. We got more. Oh, sorry, please. Um, What what (laughs) Bubsy Paws on Fire. I know how passionate you are. Bubsy Paws on Fire. Yes, Yes, I did see it. This will be very expensive. I imagine most of these games are. Probably, the trophy list looks like a joke. It's easy. There was one I saw the other day in there. It was something like, oh, forgetting, is this the game where you, you pass a level? Yeah, complete a level without gathering any collectibles. I want for nothing. <laughs> Let's go. And, unless there's collectibles everywhere. I mean, maybe it's one of those, it might be one of those ones where there's like stars everywhere yeah. on the screen and you got to not hit them. Yeah. But still, it doesn't. But it says any level. Like, so. eat a level, buy something in the store. I mean, maybe there's something I'm missing here. Just play as every character in the game, watch the credits at the end of the game without skipping. So I guess you have to finish the game because of that, at least. Yeah. Levels, be to certain levels of certain character, try a donut costume, hear all of his de- one- death one-liners in a single play session, so just run off the cliff a bunch of times, play level as another certain character, beat World 1's boss, beat World 2's boss, beat a Bubs game, purchase all the costumes, and play every main level with every character. That's it. So it sounds pretty natural, this. Very long, either. No. Yeah. I can't imagine this is like some 20-hour platforming thing. No. It sounds like you might get most of those naturally, too, so that could be, you know, that could be all right. Or the cleanup's going to be like a half hour. Mm. Yeah, sure. Well, there's obviously chapter select or world select, so that that would be fine. So, yeah, we got, we got a bunch. There's a ton. A ton. It's starting to ramp up. We got a Mahjong game, which might actually be kind of fun. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really know the list is in Japanese. It looks like there might be online stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's not well, there's also this Suburba City, which is, is only available on the Japanese store as well. This will be uh, potentially quite a short 100%, I think. But uh, it looks quite... A, I like these type of games. So it looks fun. I'm not going to play it in Japanese, though. I'm, I'm, City but... reached the highest level? How is that going to be? That might not be very short. Oh, uh, I see some people have done it in a couple of hours. By the look, two hours, two hours, yeah. So, I, I mean, it's oh, probably one of those yeah. games you could play, you know, for hours and hours and hours, or, you know, if you just focus on the trophies, you probably do it quickly. But you can play that in Japanese if you want to, or I think that is going to get it some sort of a Western digital release, hopefully, at some point as well. We'll, we'll, wait, we'll wait and see. But there's, there is a stack of stuff there this week. You know, I think I think we have to up it to 50 plats this week. I think that's that's manageable. I still think I still think a hundred plats in a day is <laughs> hundred plats in a day. Would that would that be a world record? I mean, borderline possible at this point. Like zero to plat, I think you could probably if you had twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. That's what yeah. like four plats an hour. You got a bunch of like one minute things stuff. You you could maybe get in the Guinness Book of Records, fastest person to a hundred. Oh man, yeah, but you're gonna have to somehow prove that on profiles, you know, because that's. That's what they accept. Oh, well, that's true. Well, I, I think with something like that, you could just circumnavigate those sites and just go straight to Guinness and do it through them. I, you know, you know, I actually applied to Guinness World Records. Oh, really? What for? They denied me. What for? For high or most games completed with 100%, most plat- oh, wow. 100%, and highest trophy? No, there's one more. Most games, most plats, most trophies with 100% profile, and they uh, denied me. Was it, well, maybe their, their, their position is softening now, you know. No, they were <laughs> soft, so I should try it again. No, they, Well, you could, you could always try again. We can't justify this or something. Or the thing that you, it's not measurable or something. I don't remember. I probably have the email. Sigh. Would have been cool, but whatever. These, these awards are, are whatever, aren't they? I mean, it doesn't, doesn't really matter at the end of the day, you know. <laughs> Guinness, can I get my $15 back? Oh, I had to pay like five bucks for each one of them. Oh, did you? Yeah. They probably don't even send you a copy of the book, do they, if you get in? Maybe they do. I don't. Is there a book anymore? Or they, they probably oh, don't even yeah, most of them aren't even in a book. Most of them are just on their website, yeah, I think. Yeah, see, look, it just shows how old I am. Uh, I still think it's in a book. Uh, it's all. Well, they do have books, yeah. I think, but they like put the select things yeah. in there every yeah. time. 
things that they could good good pictures and but yeah. So if people want to complain to Guinness, <laughs> let's leave Guinness alone. About me in the in the world record book or other things, feel free. Well, look, I think I, <laughs> you don't don't ask for that. You know, this this week again. Sorry to bore the listeners here, but this is the first week, and I'm going to say this now, and then this will come out next week sometime, and it'll just go it'll go hand the other way. But this is the first week we haven't had a dislike on YouTube, so all either all the dislikers are oh, away. This one is gonna... I know it's well, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had a this one's going to get some dislikes. Yeah, a, a couple people, of weeks ago, people really listen to it. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we had our our best dislike numbers at 14, which I think is fantastic. I almost disliked it. Good job, to get us to 50. No, no, it wasn't mind. It was the it was a pre- previous oh, really? week. Yeah, so I think I think we had the most hated person on, other than me. So no, it can't be. Previous week was previous week was RD. Yes, that was our that was our top number uh, of dislikes, and I did not dislike. Oh, that, yeah, top myself. number of dislikes. I thought you meant the one yeah, we had zero dislikes. Top, no, 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 no. No, that me, was the mind me. one, right? Yeah, yeah, the no, yeah, no dislike. Yeah. So everyone, everyone loves her. So we're, we're, well, I don't know if we're improving. That means he's a better guest than RD, right? Well, Is that what that means? I don't know. You know, maybe I was less obnoxious <laughs> that week. That maybe that's what it means. I don't know. Uh, all, all the dislikers were busy disliking something else, but hopefully they'll come back because I do enjoy a good dislike uh, or two. I'd also like to thank our. Uh, I noticed that our, our subscribers are, are slowly going up. We're up to nineteen, which is kind of exciting. I don't know. I, I haven't actually subscribed myself yet. I don't think Unknown has. So that's actually a true nineteen. You know, who knows? When I have that. Yeah, I have actually not subscribed to it myself. Yeah, who knows? We might hit 20. But look, don't worry. If we do hit 20, I don't plan on doing any Patreon. There'll be no $1 join us, whatever else, or anything like that. We're just here for you to have a bit of fun and have a chat as we go. So is there anything else you'd like to throw out this week, Unknown? Or shall we uh, shall we wrap it up there? I guess we could wrap it up. I uh, You guys can find me on Twitter, MrUnknown625, and also streaming on Twitch at MrUnknown625. Excellent. So uh, if you want to reach out to us, uh, we're at uh, push2plat at gmail.com. You can listen to us on YouTube, iTunes podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify as well. So uh, next week, we're going to be back again. Similar format. We're actually going to probably have, it'll probably turn into a bit of a spoiler class. So I'll let you know in advance. We'll run the normal first half of the episode, but we will give a warning. Next week, we're going to be talking all things Kingdom Hearts 3. We have a, a, a player that's very passionate about it. I know Unknown has has basically finished the game and i'm gonna try and marathon it i'm at the end of world one so i've got a bit of work to do this week but i'm looking forward to it you know as much as as i possibly can i think so you know if if that does interest you then definitely you know check out the whole episode next week if it doesn't i totally understand maybe just check out the first half if you hate it then just hit the dislike and you know that counts for us as well Uh, whatever works best but i'd like to thank you again man you're really really pushing those dislikes aren't you (laughs) I want to see if we can get to 20. You know, uh, dislikes are supposed to not be a good thing. Dis- well, you know, um, I don't know. You know, everything everything counts. Everything is, everything is fun and uh, dandy, I think, in the end. So thanks for joining us today, and we will catch you next week. Thank you, Unknown. All right. See you, everybody.